Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. G'day, Coxie. How are you? I'm really well today, Was How about you? Fantastic. How about you, listeners? How are you going today? You're I'm getting well. paid? I'm well. I'm well. You're well. getting paid for what you're worth? Oh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those touchy subjects. Oh, yeah. So today's, today's possibly going to make some people angry. Oh, yeah. I reckon it'll make a lot of listeners angry, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some information shared today that has the potential to upset your apple cart today. Mm-hmm. Um, so you might want to sit down for this one. Uh, yeah, I don't. You, you know what? Don't drive and listen oh, to this no. episode. Don't be driving while you're listening <laughs> to this because you'll either get a speeding fine. You'll mm-hmm. be so you'll you'll just like be jamming that pedal down to the floor, or you're going to get into a road rage incident with mm-hmm. somebody that cuts you off in traffic. So um, there's our there's our warning. Yeah, disclaimer. Don't drive. Yeah, and yep. listen to this episode. So tradies in business Australia takes no responsibility for your behaviour on the road whilst listening to this podcast. Gosh, that was well. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> no wonder people can't keep up with me. <laughs> So today we're talking about getting paid, but more importantly, Coxie, we're talking about how to avoid debts and all of that crap that happens when people dispute invoices or mm-hmm. pay late and, you know, basically just stop paying you. We're looking at the preventative measures. Yeah. Now, Who would have thought? Prevention is not very sexy normally. It's but, not sexy uh, at all. I, I'll be honest here. Um, I thought today's interview, not because of the person, but, but just because of the topic. The topic, yes. I thought today's interview was going to be as boring as a Snoozy. proverbial bat poo. <laughs> yes. And I was really prepared. I'd had three coffees. I had two glasses of water at oh, hand. Yeah, he was wired. And I thought, I'm going to strap myself in for this one and just get it done. And it was bloody brilliant. It, it, it's, oh. Big ups to our guest. I, I mean, think it had so. nothing That's to do with no. us, let's be, let's be honest. <laughs> If it wasn't for our guests, this would be have just crap boring. Because <laughs> the subject itself is like PPSR and terms of trade and it's boring. registering security interests. But and it's not so boring when you understand Unsecured it. creditors and all the terminology is enough to put you to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, but today's guest, Cameron Marsden from Bulletproof My Business, um, he has absolutely crushed it. Oh, it's amazing. It was great. Um, now... Cameron has been kind enough to um, make <laughs> – I put him on the spot a bit after we finished the interview today. <laughs> yes. And said, righto, man, give us an offer for our Trade Desk members. Mm. And he's like, oh, yeah, look, the pricing's already pretty good. I'm like, no, that's okay. Like, even a stubby cooler would be fine. Yeah, just something to and say And he's thanks. turned around and offered to give 1500 bucks mm. freebie to everybody who uh, registers for his service – if they're a Trade Desk member. Unbelievable. Now, Trade Desk membership is $49 a month. If you don't know anything about it, head on over to tradiesinbusiness.com.au forward slash Trade Desk, or you could just go to the website. Um, you'll see the button at the top menu there. Go and have a look at the Trade Desk. There's a ton of value in there without Cameron's offer today. Mm-hmm. But with it, you basically get your first year of Trade Desk membership almost for free. Absolutely. So, uh, actually, you do. My maths is terrible. Yeah, I'm just hanging on. It's Friday it's afternoon. Friday. <laughs> Friday afternoon. I haven't had lunch yet. My blood sugar's crashed. Actually, no, mine doesn't do that. <laughs> anyway, the point is, if you join the Trade Desk, you will get access to offers like Cameron's today, which is which is fantastic. So, um, stick around till the end and you'll find out what that one's all about. Please do. Um, but otherwise, head over to tradiesinbusiness.com.au. Have a look at the Trade Desk. It's there's no contracts. There's a money back guarantee. Um, we are always putting more into the trade desk every day. We're talking to more fantastic new partners with partner offers and discounts. Um, we're adding new content and training. We've got live Q and A sessions. Uh, this thing is is uh, becoming bigger than Ben Hur. <laughs> yep. But uh, we just want to help you, traders in business, to 
avoid the sort of stuff that mm. we talk about in today's episode. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's been conversations in the, uh, the, the public Facebook group, um, Traders in Business, about exactly this stuff just in recent days. Mm. And it seems to be every week someone's That's talking a, about getting paid. So. It's a pain point for all small business owners. So have a listen to the episode. Make sure you check out the links and uh, please go join the trade desk, even if it's just to take advantage of this offer and then, uh, you know, you'll find that all the other stuff is worthwhile as well. Enjoy the show. So joining us on the Tradies in Business podcast today is Cameron Marsden from Bulletproof My Business. G'day, Cameron. How are you? Well, thanks for work. How are you? Very well. And we're also joined by... I was going to have to think of a descriptive <laughs> word then, Coxie. We're joined by Coxie. <laughs> Hello. I hope it was going to be a nice one. <laughs> What's that word? Inimitable? Is that it? It's hard to say, but I don't even know what it means. It just sounds I fancy. I don't know what... Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep, okay. Sure. Anyway, Maybe we're here to talk to Cameron, not us. Um, so, bulletproof my business. Is that to protect us from mafia drive-bys or something, Cameron? Like what? <laughs> What's the real story, mate? You'd be amazed how many times I get wholesale inquiries asking me what sort of bulletproof materials I can supply. <laughs> <laughs> bulletproof glass for for tradey utes. No, that'd be bulletproof a in a metaphorical sense. We protect businesses. We make sure that businesses get paid on time and in full. Fantastic. Cool. So I'm pretty sure not many of our listeners would be interested in that, <laughs> getting paid Absolutely. on time and in full. Uh, I know in the group, in the Traders in Business Facebook group, just yesterday, I think there was a, a mm. huge thread about um, someone who refused to pay an invoice. It was a small invoice, uh, but like $50. And the the employee of the tradie uh, didn't sort of follow the system properly went away yeah. without collecting the payment and then the customer has disputed it afterwards and said, no, I'm not paying that. You shouldn't have charged it to me. And so there's this this big, uh, yeah. it's a deeper question. You know, the 50 bucks is not so much the issue, but it's that deeper question of how the heck do I get people to pay me? Uh, so I'm assuming uh, it's not about baseball bats or standover <laughs> tactics or anything, Cameron. I mean, you look like a scary no. dude, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's just uncommon. Yeah, no problem finding adjective for me. Jeez. <laughs> well, I like to make our guests feel comfortable, mate. Good job. <laughs> so tell us about no, look, bullet, Bulletproof My Business, mate. How do you do it? It's nothing to do with standover tactics. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We are Australia's only debt preventer. And we find that a lot of the time, <clears throat> a lot of the time the problem is that people, like you said, haven't followed the right process. And if you follow the right process, and if that process is easy enough that following it is not going to take away from your main job, then you'll find that a lot of these problems simply don't happen. You know, in the five and a half years that I've been running Bulletproof, we haven't lost a single cent for any of our clients before. Wow. And that's because the process that we've put in place for them works. And you'll find that the opposite problem happens. People who aren't going to pay you will tell you before you work with them. Because when you put a condition, a terms and conditions in front of them and say, right, you need to sign this before I do the work, they're going to say, oh, no, 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 no. I don't need to sign that. I don't want to sign that. Insert any excuse here. They're telling you that they're not going to pay you. Mm. Because yeah. if you think about it, when you went and got your mobile phone, you signed the contract for that, you didn't hesitate for it, did you? No. Because you knew you were going to pay and you wanted it. Mm. The same is true of people engaging the services of, all of your tradies out there. The fact is, if they're going to pay you, if they intend to pay you, they're going to have no problem signing a contract and you deserve to have a contract because what a lot of these business owners don't realize, and this is probably the most critical thing that will come out of this whole conversation, is when you do business with someone you don't know, when you take on a new customer, you are lending them money, okay? You are doing a job in advance of getting paid. You are putting materials quite often in or on the house that you're working on or the business premises, whichever it is. And as soon as you install those materials, they become a fixture and they can never be repossessed regardless of how strong your contract is. Mm -hmm. So basically you are going to a complete stranger, shaking their hand and saying, yes, of course I'll lend you $200, $3,000, whatever it is. And then walking away, hoping that they're going to pay you. And all too often people do that with little more than a handshake. And the fact of the matter is, these tradies, you guys deserve better. Mm. You deserve better than that. And you wouldn't be able to walk into a bank and just shake their hand and walk away with cash without an agreement. 
That is exactly what you are doing day in, day out. And that's exactly what we need to fix. And that's what Bulletproof does. We stop that from being the case. We put into place a contract and a credit process that is so easy that anyone who can send an email can use our process. They don't need to have specific credit knowledge, but they can have a credit process as powerful and effective as a bank. Mm. Okay, so how does this work, Cameron? I'm thinking I'm a busy builder. I don't have time to do all these checks and balances. I know that I should, but I don't really have time. I, it's all confusing. I don't know what to do. How does it work? The easiest version of this that requires absolutely no effort from you whatsoever is as part of the system, you get given different links for consumers, for commercial, different types of cre um, credit applications in terms of trade and so on you could put the terms of trade link on your website and just say to a customer, you need to jump on my website, click on agree to my terms of trade, put in your name, email address and phone number and agree to my terms before I'll do any work for you. It requires no effort whatsoever. And frankly, you can be very busy throwing your money away, but yeah. I'm sure you'd rather get paid. Absolutely. That's a great point. This and considering that our credit process, the whole thing can be done in less than a minute. There's no excuse for not doing it. I, I can hear the the excuses, the fear, the anxiety from listeners already around this. And it's because I've heard it before. I mean, for, for more than 10 years, I've been pleading with business owners to do that sort of a thing. And yeah. probably the most common pushback I get is people won't sign it and then they won't do business with me and I won't be able to get the customers because it's too onerous and that no one else does it. So, you know, they'll just go use the guy down the road who doesn't have this weird process before we even do the work. Yeah, and look, I've heard that all before as well. <laughs> I'm sure and you have. What, what you find is that, um, and especially, and this, this is for people who are listening to this, what you're going to find is that when you start sending this out, the perception of your business changes. Mm. You stop being just that guy down the road who does this particular job and you become a business overnight. Okay, when people see that you've got a formal process, yes, some of them are going to refuse to sign your terms of trade. And that's because they don't intend to pay you. Mm. Yeah. It's really that simple. Pretty people much. who intend to pay have no problem signing this. And literally there are three fields that we ask them to fill in. Name, email, phone number. They tick a box and they click a button. It takes them less than 10 seconds. It's very easy to do. It's not intrusive at all. It's not invasive. And the whole point of this is we're doing this to get you paid. And really, the people who say those things, who come up with those excuses, it's a little bit of self-perception as well. You know, you need to take yourself seriously as a business owner. You know, you're doing this not for fun. You're doing this to provide for yourself, for your family, to make sure that you are running a business. And part of running a business, and probably one could argue the most important part of running a business, is getting paid. That's what we fix. And... If you are going to make excuses and skip a process that will take you less than a minute, then you are already not getting paid and you won't be in business much longer anyway. Yeah. Yep. I think it's a, you really touched on something important there, Cameron. I think very often tradies in particular forget why they go to work. We go to work to provide for our families and try and find that time with our families through having that cash flow. And you That's can't right. do that if you don't have the checks and balances in place. That's exactly right. And there's this big, big misconception. And look, it's, it's not a misconception because th this idea that the credit process takes a long time is absolutely right if you're with anyone else. Mm. If you are using a paper-based process or something where you've got to fill in this whole lengthy form, it's going to take you a long time. There's mm. no doubt about that. And in fact, we did a few tests on it as well. Our nearest, I guess you could call them competition, it's kind of like comparing a horse and cart with a V8, but you know, <laughs> our nearest competition, they have blank paper-based forms. You need to either fill it in and print it out and sign it, or you've got to print it out, fill it in by hand and sign it. It takes at least an hour to go through the whole process, and that's what they're comparing it to. Mm. When you compare that to what we do, literally 10 seconds, your customer can have that form filled out. It comes back to you, and processing it is just a matter of clicking a few buttons, which can be done on your phone. You don't even need to be on the computer. Mm -hmm. So the whole the whole process has been made so simple and so easy that anyone of any skill level can do it. It doesn't get in the way of the business process. And because of the fact that we are integrating with most of the pieces of software out there that you would use, for example, Zero and a lot of the job management software, we don't even get in the way of the process. A lot of the time, this whole thing can actually be invisible. 
So it's like having an accounts person working in the background 24 hours a day with a fraction of the salary. Mm. And right. when you add to that our latest service offering, which I haven't told you guys about yet, so this will be a little surprise, but <laughs> it's called Great Paid. Okay, and basically just imagine that you are a trader, you're doing a lot of one-off jobs. Quite often, you'll go in, get the job done, move on to the next one. You could be doing six, seven, eight of those a day. Then on top of that, you've got to go home and do the invoicing, give them seven days to pay, wait for them to pay. It's quite a lengthy process. And a lot of the time, it's easier to just let a couple drop off and not pay mm. than it is to chase them and spend that time doing it. We have found a way and we've created a way to fix that completely. So just imagine for a second that you're a tradie, you go, before you do the job, you send off your terms and conditions by putting in name, email, phone number and clicking a button. Our system then goes to your customer, gets them to sign the terms of trade and then presents another page after that that says, right, we just need to grab your credit card details. It will be charged at the end of the job. You have control of this process because there is a job completion form as part of this as well, but there's nothing else that you need to do. So they put in their credit card details. The tradie goes and does the job. While they're there, they say, hey, I just need you to quickly do that job completion form. It's on your phone. Tick, click, done. Okay, that's literally all that they need to do. When the tradie goes home and raises the invoices, we detect it and we automatically charge the credit cards, which means there's no waiting seven days. There's no paperwork. There's no extra work to do. We charge their credit card immediately. The tradie doesn't have to look at the credit card. They don't have to worry about chasing up any bills. It means their cash flow is accelerated. And more importantly, those jobs that they're dropping because they're just not chasing them will get paid. It's just so simple. I don't know why anybody hasn't thought of it before. <laughs> well, this is the problem. A lot of people have thought of stuff like this before, but they always do it back to front. Sure. So you, you, there's no point sending a bill with credit card payment on it after the fact because most tradies, they're fixing a problem which has urgency attached to it. Mm -hmm. mm. As soon as that urgency is removed... The urgency is removed. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So we have a way to collect the credit card when the urgency and the pain is still there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a high point for them. They want to make sure that they get this problem fixed. And we maintain that credit information securely so that the tradie never has to look at it. When they've done the job, they just raise the invoice and then we process the payment for them. So oh. it just takes away all the administration and it reverses the normal process. And it does it the way really it should be done. And look, we're the only ones who can do this because we get the terms and conditions signed at the right time in front of the customer, which is the time to present that credit card page and say, hey, we yeah. need your credit card. We're going to charge you when the job's done. Yeah. Yep. Which again, this is a huge alarm bell. If they refuse to sign that, if they don't want to put their credit card or debit card in, they're obviously not going to pay you. Mm. Yeah, well, there's a there's a doubt cast early on in the process and you can address that then, you know, and, mm. and even if it exactly. is, you know, they're uncertain about the process or they're worried about the whole online thing, it's still something that can be addressed early on instead exactly. of waiting until after the fact. Yeah, yeah. And you'll find that because people are filling this in on their own phone, a lot of the security concerns are gone. It's not like they're grabbing the tradies phone and putting their credit card in there or yes. using a mobile FPOS terminal or any of that sort of stuff. This eliminates so many problems, mm. you know, for the tradie. It means no more carrying around square readers, mobile FPOS terminals. Your staff don't have to talk to people about collecting money. It can just be done mm. and you can sit back and let your staff actually manage the process without it being intrusive. Because one thing that we've found as well with a lot of particularly younger tradies, they're quite nervous asking for payment. Of course. Yes. They're really yeah. uncomfortable with it. And exactly that scenario you mentioned, yeah. they would rather walk away and not collect a payment mm. and know that they're skipping part of the process because they're not thinking about the hardship that they're causing by not doing it. They're just thinking, this makes me really anxious. This is not what I signed up for. I'm mm. out of here. That's exactly what happened. You know, young guy, um, the, the customer sort of pushed back a little bit. He didn't, uh, you know, the technician was like, oh, yeah, okay, well, I'll, you know, chat to the business owner about it and as soon yeah. as he drove off it's too late uh you know yeah. it's become a, an invoice dispute and you know a few people said uh in the group that oh it's only 50 bucks you know chalk it up to experience but as the business owner rightly said that happens enough times and they're doing a lot of smaller jobs mm -hmm. that 50 dollars here there and everywhere turns into 300 bucks a week uh yeah. you know that can be a big impost on a business that's, that's, that's a 15 grand a year business mm. yeah yeah that's right that's, that's a huge amount and that's your profitability gone. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sadly. <laughs> that, that's it. And, you know, the, the fact is it's just not good enough. You tradies deserve better. Mm. You can have better than that. You don't have to 
cop all these losses. There's no reason to do that. You know, we are here. We can help. We do make this easy. And oh, we've lost Nicole. Oh no, she's she's madly taking notes, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. It's all right. She doesn't need resuscitation or anything. She's just on the floor Still having uh, hyperventilating about all the time she could have used this in her business. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> So what's but, what's the the basis of this, Karen? I mean, it all sounds fantastic, and obviously the system is a big part of it. And when you get the paperwork signed, but is there like is this founded in law, or or oh, you know, is there absolutely. some sort of recourse that you have if someone doesn't pay, or the credit card bounces, or whatever? Yeah, there is actually. And look, we have a legal team that goes through our process constantly. It's been developed by a legal team, so it's not that we've just put together something fun and thought this will work well. This has been developed with a legal team basically overseeing the entire process. And we actually have two different partnerships that we work with when it comes to debts not being paid. For consumer debt, that is just mum and dad jobs, okay? If our process doesn't get you paid immediately, we've partnered with Bill Chaser. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill Chaser will then step in, take the signed terms of trade, the invoice, put them together and say, right, we'll go off and chase that debt for you. Now, Mm -hmm. they will charge 25% extra to the client but because of our terms of trade, doesn't cost the tradie anything. Great. Okay. For commercial debt, we have a similar situation. We use late payer list. Um, again, we will take the signed terms and the invoice, give that to late payer list. They'll chase the commercial side of it. And it means that you've got a specialist in each part working on what they're very good at. So you're never on your own. And the other thing too, we don't just provide a credit process. We provide a service. If ever any of our clients need any help, we're always there. Either myself or my team are there to support them and guide them through contextually whatever situation they're facing. When you add to that the fact that we're in the final stages of testing with zero to become integrated with zero, we're going to have the credit process will be visible within zero as well. So we'll actually be able to see back and forth what's going on in terms of what invoices have and have not been paid and we'll be able to guide our clients on what needs to happen next. It's a great so service, the, Cameron. Um, thank you. So how did, you. how did you come to, to put all this together, mate? Did you just, you know, wake up uh, one day as a 17-year-old and decide that <laughs> this is what you wanted to do in life? Or uh, was there a bit of a journey no. that led you to bulletproof my business? There was. And I, I guess if you want to go back that far, I started my first software company at 12. Wow. Uh, what I've was that? Been- what, what does a 12-year-old do as a software company? Oh, God, it was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it must have been G-rated, mate, because you're only 12. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. That's true. I I wrote this piece of software called School Assistant Pro, and I didn't realize, of course, being naive, that there was a massive accounting platform called SAP, which the uh, the abbreviation (laughs) caught their attention. Whoops. Some rather stern letters from the legal team. Oh, no. But I, I started this off with the idea of helping students to manage their timeline, to manage their study timetable, to manage basically what Google Classroom does now back when I was 12. So that would have been 19, a long time ago. Not long. Yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah, (laughs) a couple of years ago. So, but ever since then, you know, I've been in business. And when I was running a company in Sydney, I actually lost a couple of my clients to liquidation. Sure. And out of my own pocket, I lost about $160,000. And that was a pretty painful lesson. I was a single dad in my early 20s. You know, I learned that lesson pretty painfully and early on. Mm. And from there, I decided to learn everything I could about liquidation, about preventing this sort of thing from happening to anybody. I initially kept the information. I I was a little bit selfish with it. I wasn't really sharing it. It was more to protect myself, to make sure that that didn't happen to me again. Mm -hmm. Then I went through a fairly significant life-changing process. I actually had cancer. Oh, wow. And has a habit of changing your perspective on things just a little bit. Mm. So um, got through that. I'm fine now, by the way, don't worry. But got through (laughs) that and it completely changed my perspective. And I decided that I wasn't going to hoard this knowledge just to myself. I needed to share it and to make sure that other businesses were protected and to make sure that other people didn't have to go home and say to their families, we've lost everything because of someone else. Yeah, no, I didn't yeah. want anyone else to go through that. Yep. So I ended up launching Bulletproof My Business. And from there, I took a process that up until now has been quite labor intensive and difficult and let's face it, boring. Yep. <laughs> we've made it really simple, really easy. We've taken all the knowledge and expertise out of it. So basically, you just followed the bouncing ball through the process and we'd all the hard work for you. 
Yeah, right. I do like a bouncy ball. That makes <laughs> life so much easier. <laughs> Or a rabbit? So does my dog. I like a rabbit. Now, now, uh, just I, I have to, <laughs> I have to paint a picture for our listeners too, Cameron, because um, I think you know finance clauses and terms and conditions and all the stuff you've talked about. They're probably sitting there picturing what you would look like, and and Cameron is sitting in. Uh, well, it looks like an office, mate. I don't know. It could be your wardrobe. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> it's the laundry. You have you have quite a nice chair. Um, but he's wearing a, a T-shirt and it has the Norton brand on the front. And, and for any motorcyclists uh, worth their salt, they would know what the Norton brand is. So I'm impressed, mate. You're, you're pretty casual. Um, I, I don't think you've shaved for a while. Like it's just... <laughs> <I haven't had laughs> but, but it is, uh, you know, people have this idea that it's stuffy and you should be wearing a suit and you're probably in a fancy office in Sydney in Pitt Street or something. Um, yep. And I like the fact that that you've actually come at this almost from the technology side of what is a simple solution. And we've had a number of guests on the show, uh, I think, that are coming up with solutions, not just for tradies. I mean, some of them are specific for tradies, but coming up with solutions based on what works best rather than old school ways of thinking and you know very conservative approaches to getting paid or doing quotes or whatever it is. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing, mate. Thank you. Thank you. And look, I, I am very casual. I suppose it's a little bit different when people hear me on the phone. Quite often they assume that I'm sitting in a suit, which is <laughs> we just, obviously there's no video with this podcast, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to assume you're wearing yeah. pants, mate. Oh, please, please. I'll point, I won't point the camera down. <laughs> Well, that assumes that we're wearing pants too. So. Yeah, and often you're telling people that we don't wear pants. I don't. How do we get to this all it's, the time? It's there, isn't there a pants off work day or, or no work in the nude day or no. something? No, Friday, which happens to be today. Pants so. off Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Making finance fun. Um, so, Cameron, I want to ask you about this this PPSR. There's a lot of people that talk about it. A lot of people claim to know all about it uh it's yeah. it's apparently very important that we do know about it um is it relevant like like is is it something that tradies should know about in their business and and what should yeah, they know look, it's only relevant if you're in business so that's right. not everyone so <laughs> keep going look, the ppsr the ppsr which is the register and the ppsa which is the act of probably the most convoluted and misunderstood laws in business today. Mm -hmm. cool. perfectly frank. And I'm yet to find anyone who can explain it in a simple way mm -hmm. that makes sense to people that, you know, is not just throwing a bunch of legal jargon at them. And at the end of the day, that's totally unnecessary. So let me try and tackle that for you. <laughs> Thanks, Cameron. The PPSA, the PPSA, the Personal Property Securities Act, even the title of the law is misleading because mm -hmm. when you hear the word personal property, immediately you think it's nothing to do with business. Yeah, This is probably the most impactful legislation we've had since GST. Mm -hmm. That's how big it is. Wow. It changes everything to do with money, with how we get paid, with whether that money is ours or not and what happens around liquidation. It also changes everything around property and whether we actually own something. And to give you probably the best place to start, a good example is that a lot of you out there are probably putting on your invoices, all goods are my property until they're paid for. Unfortunately, this hasn't been the case for at least 20 years, but even more so since the PPSA came out, the whole notion of title is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. So basically, as soon as something physically leaves your custody, in other words, it's not in your hands, it's no longer yours, mm -hmm. unless you have a registration over it. Okay, and even a registration over it doesn't always work. That's so big. when it comes to the stuff that you're installing in homes, for example, as I mentioned earlier, it becomes a fixture and can never be repossessed, even if you've got what we would call a perfected PIMSI, which is the term and not the legal stuff, a, a registration over it, mm -hmm. because there are other laws that come into play with that. So when you're dealing with something on the business side of it, if you're doing business to business, then absolutely registrations can protect you. Mm -hmm. You can have registrations over the goods that you sell. For most of the tradies out there, though, because you don't just supply product, you actually physically install it as well a lot of the time, the PPSR is not going to help you a lot on the product side of the business at all. Mm -hmm. However, however, on the money side of the business, which is the part that nobody ever talks about, there is a lot that you need to understand. 
okay? Now, when we're talking about the PPSR, I'm talking about businesses that deal with other businesses. Mm -hmm. We are talking about when you get paid, who that money belongs to. We're going to talk about what happens in liquidation. We're actually going to talk about the order and process of liquidation as well because all of it comes into play. So basically what the PPSR allows you to do is to become a secured creditor against those who you are issuing credit or lending money to. Now, again, this is where that whole lending money concept becomes really important because when you issue a business credit, when you sell them something and you put seven days, 30 days, whatever credit terms you offer them, you are lending them that money for the period of that for that period of time on the hope that they'll pay it back to you. Mm-hmm. Now, there are a lot of things that you need to understand around that. For example, you need to have ironclad terms of trade for that. That's obviously what we do. I'm not mm-hmm. going to worry about that anymore. I think we all know that's important. Yep. What the PPSR does, though, if you are an unsecured creditor, which almost all of you out there are going to be right now, if your customer goes into liquidation and they owe you money, in the 17-18 year, 92% of unsecured creditors got zero cents in the dollar. Mm. Okay? ninety, And I'm going from memory here, so I may be slightly off with the decimal places, but 92 <laughs> to 98% got less than one cent in the dollar. So in other words, if you're an unsecured creditor, you're not going to get paid. No. Okay? No. And you should be thankful that you're not getting paid because that's actually the more friendly part of the law. What we want to talk about now is something called voidable preference or preferential payment clawback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone out there has heard of someone who has gone through this. You may have gone through it yourself. Okay. I apologize in advance. This is not going to be a fun conversation. But once you know how to prevent this from happening, you're going to be in a much better position. Mm. So long story short, the way that voidable preference works, and this is a really simplified version. If you're an unsecured creditor and your customer goes into liquidation up to four years after they've paid you, the liquidators can come back and take the last six months worth of what you were paid in total with seven days to pay. Now, the problem with that is if it's over $2,000, they can actually liquidate you to get that money back off you. Okay. It's a really significant problem. It's a horrendous circle. It is. It is. And that's why when these big companies fall over, it cascades all the way down to the medium, the small, yeah. and eventually to the little owner operator business who just had, you know, a $2,000 invoice. That yeah. was owing mm. a while. You know, that's why this goes all the way down. You know, and there's a big problem at the moment. Gosh, there's always a big problem with a lot of subcontractors who are going through this exact issue. And mm. the fact is, if they, have, if they were secured creditors, they would have been immune to callback and it would have fixed a lot of these problems for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and that's the key, isn't it, Cameron? Absolutely. Prevention. Your, your credit process is everything when it comes to this. Mm. To become a secured creditor, using our process, you click a button. There's no knowledge required. If you want to do it on your own, an expert on the PPSR can generally do a registration in around 20 minutes manually. Mm-hmm. Okay, but, but you have to know the different settings and there are a whole bunch of different things you've got to know. It's not that I'm saying that the government would create a website that's deliberately. <laughs> if anyone's ever tried to set up anything in MyGov, it's like, man, do these I'm guys get paid extra to make it hard? I've tried to do the whole PPSR thing online and yeah, I failed yeah. dismally. Yeah, yeah. Called in the reinforcement. Because you're expected to have all this knowledge that yes. just you don't have. You know, for example, you've got to know about collateral classes and security types and mm. yeah, yeah. all this information. Even finding the entity that you want to register against is a pain in the ass. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to go through all these different steps just to find the entity that you want to register against. Mm. Yep. Unless you're a bulletproof client, in which case you just click a button. <laughs> <laughs> love it. And there so- is the punchline, folks. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> So anyway, when, when a company goes into liquidation, the liquidators can actually take that last six months. So just to put that into perspective, let's talk about some numbers. Let's imagine that you run a service business and you've got a client who's spending $2,000 a month with you and they're on a 30-day account. So just pretty average numbers. If they go into liquidation, they probably owe you at least two months. Mm-hmm. So there's about four grand owing at the moment. Mm-hmm. However, they've paid you in the last four years pretty consistently the liquidator is going to look at you and see that you're an unsecured creditor and that you've been paid they're going to see that in the last six months you were paid twelve thousand dollars now that twelve thousand dollars that you were paid is not a hundred percent margin let's be generous and say that that cost you at least half that to make Mm -hmm. okay and that's that's really generous yeah yeah. so that twelve 
$100,000 and has cost you at least $6,000 to generate. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not going to take the growth. They're not going to take your margin. They will take the gross amount. So they're taking 12,000, which has cost you at least 6,000. So that's already 18,000 plus you are owed 4,000 at the time. So that puts it up to 22,000. Now this is a $2,000 a month customer. Mm. A $2,000 a month customer is a $22,000 financial risk because you're an unsecured creditor. And I, I think this is the bit we don't talk about. I think it's this clawback yeah. that, yeah, okay, we might have heard of it, we, but we think it's never going to happen to me, like everything, I suppose. Yeah. That can't happen to me. I'll be fine. And we don't understand that law. And we're not meant to understand that law. Let's be honest. That's not our job. Yeah, we're not. Our yeah. job is to we're find not. the people to put them in place to help us understand and prevent it from happening. But this bit is the bit yeah. we don't talk about. It's the clawback and that huge risk from a $2,000 a month customer. That's exactly right. Mm. Jeez. And because of that, you know, when you're carrying a $2,000 a month client, you look at your risk as generally being the 30-day amount, $2,000. Yeah. So yeah. That's right. That that's there's right. all the good risk in the background. And the way to prevent that is to be a secured creditor. So let, let's flip that around. Let's go through that scenario and imagine you're a secured creditor. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that the security interest works when we do it is you are registered at the same priority as a bank. Mm -hmm. Okay, it means you're above the liquidator in terms of priority. And the important thing about that is everybody above the liquidator has to be paid before the liquidator can get a cent. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they can do that is they draw the money up from below. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... <clears throat> If you're a secured creditor and they go through this process, they're liquidating the company, they'll look at the four years of trade history, they'll see that you're a secured creditor, they can't touch you. Liquidators can't do anything about it. And more importantly, that four grand that you were owed, you will get paid in full before the liquidator gets a cent. Yes. Mm. Because really this is a big, a big complaint from uh, people that are embroiled in these situations is, you yeah. know, liquidators have fairly high fees. <laughs> I do, and, they, and, but uh, I mean, look, you need that reception of some two hundred and fifty dollars now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the plant in the corner that they rent for a hundred dollars a week, you know. Um, but but it is, you know, the the subbies and the little guys and girls out there in business that are getting clawbacks and you know getting basically shafted because they're unsecured. They see liquidators, you know, pulling their two hundred fifty thousand dollar fee or thirty thousand dollar fee or whatever. It's like, well, yeah. how come they're getting paid before me? And you can fix all of that by becoming a secured creditor, right? That's exactly right. And that's that's the whole point. That was the point of the PPSA in the first place. From a financial point of view, it was designed to make it easy for you to become a secured creditor. But the reality is because it is so complicated to do, mm. nobody in business wants to touch it. That doesn't and sound like the Australian <laughs> government at all. I know. It's remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think probably the other side of it is nobody wants to take the time to explain it either. Yes. Yeah. Now, we're the, I'm the only one and Bulletproof, we're the only ones that I know of that will actually take the time to explain this properly in context so that it makes sense. Because otherwise, when you hear PPSA, all too often I hear, oh, that's just for product that's got nothing to do with anything else. Yes. Where people are giving out advice that they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. And that's a big problem. So let's talk about liquidation a little bit more. I want to run through the sequence of liquidation mm -hmm. and for those playing at home i want you to grab out a pen and paper right now because we're <laughs> going to write down some acronyms and when we do that i want you to go through and point to different things as i talk about them because normally i would draw this for you we're going to do this like an old-fashioned radio story this well I'm, cool. I'm going to take some notes and we're going to put this in the show notes for this episode so if you if you uh Brilliant. don't be lazy do what Cameron says. Pull take some over. notes. Pull over. I know you're driving. Pull um, over. But for those that really, really can't, if you're down inside a sewer or something at the moment, we'll uh, we'll take some notes for you. <laughs> Sorry that that's your job for today. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if there's enough there, you can just stick your finger in a drawer on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nice. yeah. All right. Hopefully with gloves on. <laughs> I want you to write these down from the top to the bottom. We're going to make like a shopping list, okay? And at the top of that list, we're going to start off with PIMSI, P-M-S-I, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over what all these mean in a minute, but for now, we're just going to write these down. After PIMSI, we're going to write down bank. I'm okay. sure we know how to spell that. I won't worry about that. Is, is that an acronym <laughs> for something, Cameron? I'm sure you could come up with one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> if only the K stood for caring, it could be BSI. <laughs> oh, dear. So... After bank, I want you to write G-S-I, mm -hmm. okay? 
after GSI, I want you to draw a line across underneath it, like an underline. Yep. Okay. Underneath that, we're going to write LIQ. Mm -hmm. Underneath that, we're going to write U slash P. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we're going to write U slash S. This is interesting. My brain is working Me overtime too. to come up with inappropriate <laughs> acronyms for all of these now. <laughs> Typical training. All right, now, hit us with it. One more, there's one more in this mix as well, but we're going to go through that as we go through the list because there's okay. one more that is actually directly underneath Liquidator, but we'll go through that in a minute. Okay. So <clears throat> starting from the top, a PIMSI is a type of security interest registered on the PPSR. Okay. Mm -hmm. Without getting too technical, imagine your vehicles, your equipment, anything that's got a lease or finance on it, the bank will generally have a PIMSI over that piece of equipment, yep. which means in a liquidation, they get taken out of the picture. They're not part of the liquidation because they don't belong to the business that's being liquidated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next in priority after that is the bank. Now, the bank has to be secured at the top for them to be able to lend money. If they're not secured at the top, then the whole economy would shut down. Exactly. Okay. However, where things have changed is directly underneath the bank, the GSI is a type of registration that you can actually create for yourself to be registered against the companies that owe you money. Now, this is the same level as priority as a bank, mm -hmm. which means that it's just as powerful as what the bank has got in place protecting themselves. And the way that these work is that they have to be paid out in full, in order, before the liquidator can actually get a cent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, these work in date and time priority order. So let's just imagine that you and I both share a client and you went on and registered at this very second and I went on and registered one second after you. You will get paid everything you owe before I get a cent because yours is a higher priority. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> going beyond that, underneath the liquidator, that line that we drew across the page, that is where the unsecured creditors start. Okay, the liquidator is the highest ranked unsecured creditor in this process, but they are an unsecured creditor. So everyone above them has to be paid out in full before anyone below them can get anything. Right. Okay. Now, you may be surprised to learn this, but directly under the liquidator is the ATO, everybody's favorite government department. I actually yeah. thought they'd now, be higher. No, they're not at all. The mm. ATO is an unsecured creditor. The government doesn't take out security interests. So wow. when a liquidation goes through, the first port of call for a liquidator is to see what tax has been paid in the last four years and take it back off the ATO. Oh. And the ATO have to comply. Ooh, because, I bet they oh, love oh, that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder how much so money the ATO, the ATO spends. The tax is being paid. Sorry, yep, there's a bit of a lag on the line, but I wonder how much money the ATO no, spends no, on, fighting some of those uh, clawbacks. I can imagine it being like They don't fight them. Really? really? Let, they don't fight them because the liquidators is an absolute authority in this. They can actually take, I mean, they can take the six months off people without needing to go to court. They can take more than that if they think that there is actually misappropriation, but that's another story. Wow, that, so that's a lot of They take power. the money off the ATO. It is, it mm -hmm. is. And it's a little scary. I mean, from the liquidator's point of view, they have got a huge responsibility. Mm. doesn't quite justify their fees, but anyway. <laughs> so they take the money off the ATO. Then after the ATO is what we call an unperfected UP, unperfected security. Mm -hmm. Now, what perfection means is registration. Basically, lawyers weren't content to say registered because <laughs> it doesn't make them sound fancy enough. So they <laughs> invented the word called perfected. You have a perfected security. <laughs> now, if you have got a contract that creates the beginning of a security interest, but you have not taken the time to register that security interest, then you have got an unperfected security. Okay. It's very easy for the liquidators to prove that you're an unsecured creditor because you've taken the first step and not the second, Right. Yeah. which means that they will be the first targets to get money taken back off them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then down the bottom are the unsecured creditors where 99.9% .9 of all of you are sitting at the moment. Mm. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking, yeah, but that's not fair. You know, I've been paid. I did my job. I provided my service. I've been paid. Why does it involve me? This is the bit that nobody ever explains. The reason that the liquidators will take the money off you as an unsecured creditor and, well, that this is why, is because the theory is you've been paid and a whole bunch of other people haven't been. Mm. So we'll take it back off you and we will share it equitably among all of the unsecured creditors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
This is where their fees come into play, though, because as soon as the money goes above the liquidators, it doesn't really trickle back down. No. So there's only one place you really want to be as a business owner. You want to be above the liquidator. Above the line. Okay? Yeah. Now, that is the order and process of a liquidation. Now, there are a lot of other complications, employee benefits, and all sorts of other things that come into it. For the, for the sake of simplicity, that's how a liquidation works, Okay. So you need to be secured above the liquidator. And that's what the credit process for commercial is designed to do. Right. It will take you all the way through from the, the four major credit process steps you've got to go through. Identification, that is knowing which entity you're actually dealing with because all too often you will bring on a commercial customer and you might put an abbreviated name, you might put a nickname. Yes. It, it could be any number of things, but it w may not match the legal name exactly, Yeah. <laughs> which is the first thing that stops people paying. And, you know, when it comes to disputes and legalities, that's the very first thing that people pick on. Yep. So we eliminate that completely by making sure that we have got the legal entity correctly selected as part of the process. And it's very, very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Second is your terms. Okay. Now, all too often, the terms of trade are given at completely the wrong time. You know, I, I'm amazed at how many times I hear, oh, no, no, it's okay. I've got my terms on my invoice. That doesn't mean anything. Terms on your invoice, it's too late. Terms and conditions are only legally binding if they're agreed to in writing at the point of incurring the debt. Right. Okay, in writing doesn't mean physically written or by hand. It means they've got to be in writing, presented to your customer and acknowledged before they incur the debt. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, it needs to be done at the point of the quote, not at the point of the invoice. Mm -hmm. And this is something okay. that, that I've uh, thankfully correctly been telling people is get a quote acceptance before you start work. Yes. You know, they sign so off on simple. it and say, I agree to the T's and C's and that this is the amount of money. Then you start work. That's right. That's exactly right. Sweet. Whew. And the third... <laughs> Could have been he really, got, he really only wants right. to know that he's covering his own butt. That's all. That's the what this third, is all about today. Pro sorry, You're there's right. a bit of a delay. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the third step in the credit process is due diligence. Okay, and it's a step that all too often gets skipped. Now, due diligence is not is not sending out trade reference requests. You're wasting your time. You are only going to get the amazing trade references because <laughs> let's face it, if you want to get a loan, you're not going to put the people that you haven't paid on there. And yeah. amazingly, when you call people, you're going to get, oh, he's the greatest guy ever. He pays his bills. <laughs> he's, in fact, he's so good at paying them. I don't even generate the invoice. He's already paid me and I'm going to generate the invoice to catch up with him. It's <laughs> BS. We all know it's BS. That's yeah, not yeah. the real case at all. Mm. Yep. Now, there are a couple of different ways of doing due diligence when it comes to commercial entities. You can do the traditional credit check, which is through a, a normal credit bureau. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a bulletproof client, and this is the first time this is being revealed in public, we're working on something called a live credit check. Great. Part of our integration with Zero and the other cloud accounting systems allows us to see across the financial ecosystem more so than anyone else. We will have more visibility than any other company out there, including the credit bureaus. A credit report is a report on what's happened in the past. We're going to be able to, when you add a customer, say, right, 63% of their bills were paid on time, 13% of their bills were paid plus seven days, and the remaining were plus 30 days, and some haven't been paid. We're going to be able to give you that level of live visibility, which is what you need when you're about to lend someone money. It's mm. far more accurate than their financials because mm. you're seeing what's actually out there. Mm. That's fantastic. Now, that's, that's something that's coming for Bulletproof clients, mm -hmm. but... Again, the only way to do this sort of thing is to have a cloud-based system. Yeah. You can't have that visibility on paper. It just doesn't work. No. So the final step in this process when it comes to the credit process is registration. Now, the registration in these terms is to create that registration to perfect it mm -hmm. on the PPSR. Okay. <laughs> Again, we make this easy. You click a button. We take care of all the technical and the knowledgeable stuff, and you get protected. We make your secured creditor by clicking a button. And that means that if your customer goes into liquidation, you are not going to experience that callback. And if they go into liquidation owing you money, you are going to get paid what you are owed before mm. the liquidator gets a cent. Great. And that's a really important thing. Gee, I bet there's uh, a few people listening to this, um, and I can think of some of them by name, sadly, <laughs> that are thinking, oh, man, I wish I had done this five years ago or two years ago yeah. or last week. 
um, because it is such a big problem. I, I put a little survey up in the Tradies in Business group recently about, you know, yes or no, have you been affected by debtors, um, people not paying, disputing, paying late? And there were like the Every- instant replies were overwhelming. And I think there was, you know, three people out of a hundred that said no, they hadn't been impacted. And part of that was yeah. because of the type of the business they're in. Correct. So, you know, it's, it's yeah. frighteningly common. It is. And th- I think the biggest issue is that it is complicated. People don't want to go and talk to a lawyer about it. And, you know, quite often the accountants either can't or won't advise on this issue because they don't know about us. Mm. You know, it makes it very difficult. And because of that, too many people are suffering in silence. And, yeah. you know, it, it's all too common for people to be referred to Bulletproof or to me personally after they've had this happen. Mm. Obviously, we, we can't fix what has already happened, but I cannot urge you strongly enough. If you've experienced this, if you know someone who's experienced this, get on to Bulletproof at the very least, find out about how this works, understand how it works so that we can prevent this from happening to you again. Mm. Look, you can, of course, do all this manually yourself. It is a lot more cumbersome but I'd rather you do something than nothing. Yeah. Obviously, bulletproof is the easiest way to deal with it. But from my, point, from my point of view, my personal mission is to stop liquidation from affecting small business owners across the country. Mm. You know, there, there's, it's a huge mission and it's a lot to take on. But there are a lot of businesses out there. As you said, 97% of your users had this problem. Mm. Everyone's experienced it. And if you haven't experienced it personally, you know someone who has. That's right. And the fact is we can prevent this from being a problem for you. We'd much rather have you come to us and become a client and never experience this because you've been protected from the outset rather than go the other way and find out after the fact that it's too late. It's a bit of the now, um, umbrella strategy, isn't it? You know, it's uh, yeah. if you take it, you almost never need it. But the day you forget it, it rains like crazy. So, uh, you know unfortunately putting all this stuff in place for some weird reason you just often never end up needing to rely on it but the fact that it's there means that it never happens to you security blanket yeah this is the thing once it's in place you'll find that you're relying on it more often than you realize because the people who do pay slowly or don't pay this will eliminate them from the outset as well yes you know we we do fix a lot Mm. of other problems on the commercial side of it we fix liquidation on the residential side of it we get you paid yeah, yeah. It's really simple. Sounds like so, a pretty good plan to me. It's a fascinating <laughs> process, isn't it? So, uh, Cameron, my head is spinning, and I'm sure our listeners' uh, brains are hurting at the moment as well. And maybe there's a few uh, angry clenched fists out there at the moment. It's like, <laughs> oh, damn, I wish I knew this stuff. Um, but here you go. Uh, this is why we do the podcast. So, mate, there is a question that uh, I like. It's turned into a bit of a game for me, actually. Coxie loves this game. It's it's called trying to stump our guests, uh, and it's and it's with a question. And I, I never intended for this to stump people, but it's amazing how many people go, "Oh, geez, oh, I don't know." Um, if you had a thousand tradies in a room, or maybe on a webinar, mate, it's probably be the the modern equivalent. But if you had a thousand tradies in a room, what's one piece of advice you would just love to leave them with? I would say that the one piece of advice I'd leave these tradies is probably the one that I do all the time. And that is remember that you are not a trades person. You are in business and you need to treat your business with the dignity and respect that it deserves because you deserve to get paid. I think that might be the best answer we've ever had. That's that you've just absolutely nailed it, mate. Gold. Well thank done. You. How many hours preparation did that take, <laughs> mate? <laughs> it's a man in a motorcycle <laughs> shirt. What can I say? <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, so, uh, Cameron, no doubt people are thinking, okay, okay, bulletproof my business. I can go Google it. But what's the best way for them to actually make contact with you guys and find out what you do? Sorry, say that one more time. How much? Uh, best place to find you, mate. Uh, just Google you, or, or you know, where, where should where should tradies go to find out more about Bulletproof My Business? The best way to find out about us would be go straight to the website bpmb.com.au, or you can have a look at the Facebook page as well, Bulletproof My Business. When you go to the website, there's a link to get a demo account, so you can actually get a free demo account and take us for a test drive and see how it all works. Um, to answer the question that I get asked all too often, if you want to just become a client, you still need to get a demo account. And then when you're in the demo account, you can click on an upgrade now button. Okay, right. We still want you to see the process because 
you may have heard about us from someone else. We want to make sure that you're comfortable with it. The other thing that I'll mention just quickly is that we integrate with practically everything. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter what accounting system, what um, job management system or anything else that you're using, we can make it work. Fantastic. Nice, mate. Well, Cameron, that's uh, been an unexpected pleasure, mate. I, I thought, oh, PPSR and terms and conditions, like this is a pretty dry topic, but... Uh, Mate, I'm excited. I'm excited about how this is going to help our listeners um, and help tradies actually right around the country because it's a massive problem. I know at the moment, um, as we sit here in February 2019, uh, there's been some some stories running in major newspapers about you know big contractors falling over and just the collateral damage that happens when a company goes into liquidation, and and it doesn't have to be as bad as it is. And it's almost like you know the regulators are missing the point and maybe deliberately if I'm a conspiracy theorist, um, making this harder than it needs to be. But the solution is so bloody simple. Mm. That's that's the point. Yeah. It's just so that's simple. It. So That's it. And look, without being too cynical, small business is hard for government because there are so many of us. It's harder to legislate. It's harder to manage. So if a lot of us were suddenly not in business, then they get more tax and it's easier for them. Not that I'm saying this is a direct motivation for them to make it difficult <laughs> for us at all. <laughs> But the more businesses there are, the more small businesses there are, the harder it is for government to manage us all. Mm. Mm. That's a good but point. small business is the backbone of this economy and That's right. it always will. Absolutely, mate. Mm. Well, thanks for the work that you do, Cameron. Um, we'll put all the links uh, to you in the show notes. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing more from you down the track, mate. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Cameron. So we didn't actually touch on the special offer that Cameron has put forth to our trade desk. No. Members. We're keeping it a secret. It is a secret. <laughs> it's you for know trade we desk love members. secrets. It's for us. trade desk members. You've got to be part of the cool gang. Look, it's um let's just say it's something that you actually have to have by law. That's right. And a and a frightening percentage of businesses don't have this in place. I'm gonna say ninety nine percent. And and I know a lot of our listeners, and I mm -hmm. know their business, mm -hmm. uh, and I know they don't have this in place. Yeah, I'm, I've got to go back and have a better look <laughs> myself, actually. Well, I'm actually thinking, do we have this on yeah, Traders and Business? No, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Oh, Cameron! Yeah, yeah. I wonder if he'll do it for free for us, too. Yeah. We might have to join the trade desk We first. might have to. <laughs> <laughs> Pay our 49 bucks each. I think that'd be fair. Uh, you really uh, need to check that out, guys. Yeah. Um, absolutely worth it. Uh, tradiesinbusiness.com.au. Uh, hit the trade desk mm -hmm. button. Find out what it's all about. You can watch the really wanky video from oh, us. I if love you... our videos. I want to redo it. I do too. That, that's take two. That, I like take one better. Yeah. I want to go back and do it again. So mm -hmm. go and have a look at our ridiculous video. You can laugh. We um, don't mind. But there's some actual real stuff on the page there as well that explains <laughs> what it's all about. 49 bucks a month. No contracts. No risk. Money back guarantee. Um, basically, we look forward to seeing you in there and then you can take advantage of off, of Cameron's offer and um, more like it that mm. we're, we're loading up every day. So. Every day there's a new one. <laughs> anyway, um, hopefully that's uh, made you feel a little better and not so angry about being an unsecured creditor. If you've been through that experience mm. and you've experienced the pain of it, we probably don't need to tell you how important this stuff is. We're really sorry if you found out a bit about this too late. Yes. But it's never too late to make a change no. for the future. So get on it. Um, go register. And the other thing for Trade Desk members is we actually recorded um, a little uh, bit of secret content at the end. Uh, so if you're listening to this and you're not a member, if you go join the Trade Desk as well, um, we've got a, uh, a screen capture video taking you through how to uh, register and, and giving you a look at the back end of Cameron's website and his whole process and just how simple it is. It's ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. Simple. It was crazy. It literally took us 10 minutes mm. and we'd registered a security against him. Mm. I'm going to send him a warning letter. <laughs> <laughs> going to invoice you. Yeah. Anyway, we hope you found today's episode useful. Make sure you tell us what you think and uh, go check out the Trade Desk. Thanks for being here. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business Podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.